Boycotts are as American as apple pie. I know. I'm American and British. And as a Brit, I know very well what Americans did in Boston that one winter in 1773. American colonists boycotted tea from the British East India Company when King George III imposed a tax on it. The frustration behind taxation without representation eventually led to the Boston Tea Party, where American colonists dumped 342 chests of that tea into the Boston Harbor. It's the event historians cite as eventually leading to the uprising that became the American Revolution. The event is so symbolic in the American story that the right to protest, to peaceably assemble was eventually enshrined in the U.S. Constitution. The Supreme Court ruled in 1982 that boycotts were protected under the First Amendment. And boycotting has led to some of America's most significant and most cherished political moments. Rosa Parks' decision to not move to the back of a segregated bus in Montgomery, Alabama, led to the year-long Montgomery bus boycott, a boycott that eventually led to the federal court ruling that segregation on buses was unconstitutional. Almost 250 years later, the tradition is still very much alive in America. From the 2015 nationally coordinated boycott of the state of Indiana, when it passed its so-called religious freedom law, a law that critics said would have allowed discrimination against the LGBTQ community, to the debates just earlier this year over boycotting Georgia for passing a law restricting voter access. Even Donald Trump joined in, calling for people to counter boycott almost a dozen companies who criticized Georgia's law, companies like Coca-Cola, Delta Airlines, UPS. Boycott them, he said. You get my point. The right to boycott is not only deeply woven into the fabric of America, it's also a very bipartisan issue. Everyone does it. Everyone's on board with it. Except, except for when it comes to boycotting Israel, and specifically the Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions Movement, or BDS. 32 states in America today have passed laws that in some way ban Americans from participating in the BDS movement which is the campaign that aims to put economic pressure on Israel for its repressive policies towards the Palestinians and for its illegal occupation of Palestinian lands. In those 32 U.S. states, if you want a state government contract, if you're employed by the state, if you're a teacher at a public school, you have to sign an agreement that you won't support a boycott of Israel, a foreign country. But now there's a growing effort to fight back against those laws, and a new documentary follows three legal battles. Award-winning filmmaker Julia Basha's new documentary titled Boycott follows the cases of a publisher, an attorney, and a teacher whose careers and right to freedom of speech came under threat because of these anti-BDS laws. They've each filed suits against their employers. I have the right to boycott anyone I want to, and the state has no business getting involved in that. Period. It's none of their business. So we said no. Those who support the anti-boycott laws say the BDS movement should be banned because it's anti-Semitic. They claim BDS is all about dismantling the only Jewish majority state in the world. But for the growing number of critics of those laws, the fight to repeal them isn't about Israel or about Jews. It's about a right to free speech and a right to boycott, a right that's fundamental to America. Joining me now to discuss the film is its award-winning director, Julia Basha, and its producer, Suhad Baba. Thank you both for joining me this evening. Julia, I want to start with you and ask you how you and your colleagues came to this subject, came to this issue, came to these people. Why was this a documentary you wanted to do? Thank you so much for having us tonight. Um, I've been making documentaries with the team at Just Vision. Uh, we are a nonprofit media organization that um, looks to tell the stories uh, related to Israel and Palestine that are not getting coverage. Um, and when we saw that there were efforts in America at passing laws, uh, to say that if you want a public contract, you cannot exercise your political right to express your dissatisfaction with the policies of a foreign country, in particular, in this case, Israel and how it treats Palestinians. We knew this was a story uh, we needed to tell. Uh, we've been surprised by how little public scrutiny and public debate there has been uh, so far on this issue. And it's, a, it's an urgent matter, as you mentioned in your introduction. Uh, boycotts have been used uh, by Americans to advocate for many of our most cherished accomplishments um, historically. And um, a growing number of Americans from different political backgrounds are challenging these laws in courts. And so the film Boycott uh, traces their efforts. 
So, Ed, how did anti-BDS laws get passed in so many states, the majority of America now? I mean, I feel like a lot of people and even a lot of lawmakers in many parts of the country probably don't even know what this movement is about. Thanks so much for having us, Mehdi. Um, that's a great question. In more than 32 states, as you mentioned, these laws are in place and have been adopted. And these, they don't just happen overnight. They, just, they don't just happen by happenstance. It has been an organized effort and a well-oiled um, there are certainly um, traditional Israel lobbying organizations that have more recently tag-teamed with uh, right-wing Christian fundamentalist organizations and communities that have been gaining power in the United States um, to, to build a constitu constituency supporting and pushing these laws, together with teams like ALEC or the American Legislative Exchange Council, which is actually a traditional pro-business organization. Um, they've been able to pass cookie-cutter laws um, quite swiftly across state legislatures, again, with little public scrutiny. Um, and through the making of this film, what we've also found out is that the Israeli government has been involved in these efforts by setting up um, a nonprofit organization to channel Israeli government funds to organizations in the United States um, in, a, in an effort um, to make sure these laws have taken root, and with Prime Minister or former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu himself touting very publicly on Twitter and social media accounts um, of the Israeli government's efforts to make that happen. It seems so bizarre that Americans are being told that it's illegal uh, to exercise their constitutional rights to criticize, forget their own government, but a foreign government. Seems very odd. Julia, the film follows three people in legal battles in their states. The one we played earlier was a local newspaper publisher who didn't even know what BDS was really about, but it's the principle for him. I want to play a clip of another person you follow. Let's have a listen. I am boycotting Hewlett Packard because they are involved in the biometrics for the checkpoints. Every Palestinian has an ID card that they must have. And they delay Palestinians for many, many hours at a time. And so that's part and parcel of the occupation. After my trip to the West Bank and seeing what I had seen, I was incensed enough that I said I couldn't sign this. Julia, do you think Mick there, Mick's story, is unique among Americans or non-Palestinians who travel to Israel, or do you think he represents a growing view, a more common view than we might think? I think Mick uh, represents many Americans who have uh, come to understand the role that the United States have played um, over now decades in uh, supporting and allowing uh, the Israeli government's policies of oppression and occupation against the Palestinian population. And as Americans, they don't want to be part of that anymore. And so they have decided to respond to the 2005 call by Palestinian civil society to the international uh, uh, community, to civil society globally, to do what they can, use the power that they can as individuals or institutionally in universities or inside their companies, uh, and eventually pressuring their governments to use sanctions uh, so that Israel can be held accountable for its policies against the Palestinians. Um, Mick uh, is an American who never thought that his decision to uh, express that political view would jeopardize his livelihood, but it did. Uh, he was told that he could not get paid anymore at his job and his job in Arizona is providing civil rights uh, advice to incarcerated yeah. persons in Sedona. And so it's shocking. And it, that's happening across the country, where Americans are getting fired from their jobs because and, they want to express a political viewpoint. And Suad, we're almost out of time. Last quick question to you. It's a bipartisan issue here. People are across political parties don't like BDS. I mean, even Bernie Sanders, who is very critical of Israel, says, I will not support BDS. This goes beyond just, you know, anti-BDS laws. That's a great question. So one of the, the challenges that we found with these laws and why we took it on was a deep concern about the fact that they serve as a template. You're absolutely right that uh, state uh, senators and politicians um, have passed these laws in bipartisan ways across the country. But what we're seeing today is that there are laws, parallel laws, 
in places like Texas and currently being considered in, in, in numerous yeah. states across the country that uh, seek to punish companies for boycotting things like fossil fuels, for boycotting yeah. firearms. Um, and really what we're talking about are laws that are we, being used to impact um, and to stop folks who care about the climate, who care about the safety of We are of their out of time. I'm a, sorry to cut you off, Stuart. I wish we had more time, but it's, a, it's an important debate. The debate will continue. The film is Boycott, and to find out more about upcoming screenings, visit JustVision.org. Thank you both. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.